Labour leader John Lamont joined us in the Scotland Tonight studio. John Lamont, what are the principles behind these proposals? I think the principle is to try to strike the balance between giving the Scottish Parliament more authority, more responsibility, particularly around taxation, and making sure that we don't break the real power of the United Kingdom is that we share resources, we pool risk, and that we're able to manage economic shock in one part of the United Kingdom, and we can share that across a bigger, um, obviously, the whole of the United Kingdom. So the fundamental principle is what can we do to strengthen the Scottish Parliament while at the same time holding on to what we really value in the United Kingdom, which is that redistributive social union. The interim report from the Commission last year said there was a strong case yes. for raising all income tax in Scotland. What's changed? We explored it in, in great detail. I mean, you're right, the interim report said that. It also said that, of course, we'd look at this closely and we would not do anything that damaged the interests of the people of Scotland. We took evidence from a, a range of people, and, and certainly in the finance sector, the pension people said the cost of, for example, devolving allowances and reliefs would cost so much money that it would have an impact on people and their pensions um, and their savings. So we took the view that that was, was a, a bad idea. But actually, I think over the year, something else happened. One of the things we were looking at was how you make the Scottish Parliament more fiscally responsible. That is, you can't just be spending money, you have to make tax decisions as well. But that, I think, also has to be balanced against the point at which you take so much risk into the Scottish budget by raising your own taxation, you don't get the benefit of being part of that pooling so, of resources across the United so Kingdom. So where does this 40%, uh, the, 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 the suggestion that Scotland should read 40% of its budget, well, where, think, where does that figure come I from? I think the report says it's not really a matter of arithmetic, it's a matter of judgment, and I think that's right. But that felt right to us. You'll know that Gordon Brown made the point that about seems rather what he called... That seems rather not? No, I wouldn't agree with that. I think he called them covenanted rights. It's things you can expect wherever you are in the United Kingdom. It's reasonable that a degree of resources raised at a UK level. We took round about the 40 per cent for the Scottish Parliament. The fundamental principle here is, however, that we need to get past the point where the Scottish Parliament is about spending money and not really taking on some of the responsibilities around raising money. Uh, we looked across Europe and actually across Europe we were quite distinct in that there was so much political devolution but very, very little devolution in terms of raising taxation. We believed that was important but we didn't want to be in a position where we were breaking the benefits of being across in the United Kingdom of being able to share resource and risk across the whole Your United proposal, Kingdom. Um, you, you propose uh, increasing taxes for high earners from 45 pence to 50 pence. What will that raise? Well, we, what we said, we think it's something like £100 million which in itself, some people have said, well, that's not very much money. You could get something like 3,000 nurses for that. They're not huge numbers of top-rate tax earners. What I would be saying the IFS predicted it would be 100 million across the UK, not in Scotland, the well, Institute for Fiscal Studies. Well, those are the figures we had, and we, whatever the money's were, I'm sure that we would be able to find good well, use the for the money. suggestion is it's 10 million. But, well, the point I'm making to you is, I don't think it is 10 million, mm. but the point I'm making to you is this, that we want the Parliament to have the power, but we decide how we use that power by having a conversation with the people of Scotland about what taxation they're prepared to pay. And that is certainly something we would be very clear about ahead of 2016. Would I be right in saying that you, you, if you raise the tax for the wealthiest, you cannot then cut that tax without cutting other rates of tax? That's right. So mm. uh, that's putting Scotland at a disadvantage, is it not? Well, we're able to raise tax, we're able to reduce tax. We but, you're, but you're not without took, reducing all tax. But we took the view that actually, as a safeguard against a tax cutting government coming in and effectively breaking the union by the back door, that we, we accepted that if you're going to tax cut for one, you tax cut for all. But we think there is an advantage in having that flexibility across the taxation system for it to be more progressive. But the point I'm making is this. Too often in the, in the period of the Scottish Parliament, we have had an alibi rather than a political commitment. The alibi is, well, we would do that, but we can't raise those taxes. Mm. We are saying the power but, but is there, and then we make the political decision about what are people prepared to bear, and that would be a matter of an election. Uh, this is just a populist uh, policy, though, because it, the IFS says it doesn't raise very much, and we create potentially putting Scotland at a disadvantage. Mm. Why would you do that? Well, I don't accept that. I think the reason we thought it should be progressive and you could be able to raise it was we didn't want tax competition where you would see somebody coming in cutting tax and perhaps effectively, as I've said, breaking, uh, breaking the union in that regard. But it's also, I think it's pretty basic in tough times that we might expect those with the broadest of shoulders. We are talking about people who are earning more than 150,000 a year, perhaps making a greater contribution. But what I also... But people don't like raised taxes. No, I mean, that, no, that's well, been time I have again. accepted in my lifetime, I think there has actually been a change in attitudes to taxation. But we also know in these tough times, 
whoever we are and how much money we earn, we're worried about the quality of our children's mm. education. We're worried, worried about what's happening in our hospitals. Mm. We're worrying about the care of ourselves or perhaps elderly okay. parents. And I think there's a conversation, actually, about if you're going to have these things that matter to people, how do you fund them? It the does... problem we've got with the SNP company, they will okay, tell us that under independence... Let's focus on your policy now, though. Let, let's focus on your policy now. Services, and you don't have to pay for it, them it's, you, it's your That's proposal we're focusing on. And, you, and you, it does seem almost rather uh, piecemeal that the, there's a bit of taxation. There's a bit of, of welfare, for example. And we know from the Scottish Attitude survey, survey that the people of Scotland do not want just some welfare policy in Scotland. They want it all, and you don't deliver that. Well, I think actually what the Social Attitude Survey shows is that people want to have more power at Scottish Parliament level, but they, generally speaking around welfare and taxation, they want things to be the same across the United Kingdom. And that's the, what we were wrestling with. We recognise there is a balance here, there's a balance to be struck, and we made that decision. We particularly looked at housing but 60 benefits. Percent said they wanted 60% of the Scottish people in this survey said they wanted all welfare mm -hmm. policy in Scotland. But I also think there is a very strong argument, indeed the trade unions made this case, about actually having a, a safety net which is the same across the United mm. Kingdom in a whole range of areas. So I think we try to get the balance right, which was between bringing power closer to people, but also recognise there's some things which stay at a UK How level. But around housing benefit, the okay. important opportunity we have here is a very significant amount of money that we can ally it with our housing policy, providing socially rented housing, and look at some of the bad practice around some rogue landlords okay, well, who actually use housing well, benefit and don't provide good tenancy and don't manage their tenancy. There's, uh, there's a lot of complex issues here. How are you going to sell this on the doorsteps and you'll have a bit of tax, you'll have a bit, a bit of welfare? How are you going to mm -hmm. convince people on the doorstep I, that you've got a big plan for them? You'll forgive me but if I say I don't accept it's a bit here and a bit here. Okay. I believe it's, it's thought through and right. it's a substantial offer so how will you sell and it's the serious. What we're doing as we're doing around our campaign in general is out in the door speaking to people. We know that at the time of the debate around whether there should be a second question, people didn't particularly support independence but they wanted change. And our message is, on September the 19th, if people vote to stay strong in the United Kingdom, the Scottish Parliament can change and will change, oh. and we will bring power closer to people. I know in island you, communities, you, for example, yes, people will welcome what we've said around okay. being, being responsive to their needs and demands, and so on. And that is really that, that's what you're offering people, but you people. can't guarantee it. Let me ask you, are you prepared to compromise in any of this with the other parties to get a joint agreement that you can present to the Scottish well, people? We're very much today focusing on what Labour's offer is, what we would think are the powers that really make a difference to the Scottish Parliament. But is there room Parliament. for compromise? But I've always said in this, I've shown I've been willing to cooperate with other parties so round the argument round the argument round um, whether we want to stay in the United Kingdom or not. I've said two things. First of all, where we can get agreement, we should make that agreement. I'm not going to willfully refuse to cooperate with other people. Okay. But where we can't get agreement, we shouldn't pretend it's an issue of good faith with the people of Scotland. We shouldn't pretend that we can agree simply to get past September. But I think you, we need you, a real you, you honesty will need to in this compromise debate. to get agreement to I think, to the I people, think you know. I'm more than happy to speak to people about okay. what the fundamental actually perhaps the process of how we get to the place where we could guarantee that actually post September the 18th that change that we're offering can be delivered to people in Scotland. John Lennon, thanks for joining us in Scotland.